I haven't happen. been a, a pastry guy, but... <laughs> We, with a wave of my magic pastry wand, I yeah. will make you love to make pie. That's, I feel it happening. <laughs> <laughs>Welcome to the Food 52 Test Kitchen. My name is Josh Cohen. I'm the Test Kitchen Director here. Today we're talking about pie dough, and we have my favorite pie dough expert, Erin McDowell. Hiding Hi. underneath the table. <laughs> As one does. Yeah. The reason you're here today, the Food 52 community is always sort of peppering us with different questions about pie and pie dough. So we want to bring you in to give them like a, a broad yes. range of knowledge and wisdom. Yes, it's my favorite subject to talk about and I have a lot to say. Okay. So <laughs> my first favorite thing to just jumping off point. Yeah, like right off the bat. To start with mixing it. Okay. Because a lot of success can happen right there in the mixing bowl. We're going to talk about all my troubleshooting tips kind of along the way. And right. you won't fail. I'm here. I've got you. All right. We're gonna okay. make awesome pie dough together, I promise. So all we have in this bowl, is it's my recipe for all butter pie dough, which mm -hmm. is on 352. If you're somebody who has a hard time with pie crust, you don't have to stick with all butter, but I just like the flavor. If you know how to handle the butter, it will. you're gonna get the same results using all butter as you are with a mixture yeah. of shortening or, me, or anything else. Flavor first. I'll I agree. So I like to make my pie dough by hand, and uh, that's my, my first question for you. Do you have hot hands? Well, okay, so like the butter's already a little bit melting. <laughs> is so, that happening to you? Uh, I have kind of cold hands. I guess my hands are hot. So, but but the good news is is that if you don't want to do this step by hand, uh -huh. you can use the food processor for this first part, and that'll just minimize the amount of contact you're going to have with it. But um, but I really like doing it by hand because I think it gives you the best feel for it overall. Now, I have a question for you. Go for it. Let's say like the butter's starting to get a little melty. Like, how does that affect the pie dough? Yeah, so basically we want the pie and all the ingredients cold at every single stage. And the reason is because we want it to be, uh, it leads to that flakiness that is kind of the desired end result. So the way that you get the flakiness is by the moisture that's in the butter, so mm -hmm. the water content. When it hits the heat of the oven, that moisture evaporates and creates steam and that pushes the dough up and mm -hmm. that's what makes the dough flaky. So it's all about keeping, if your butter melts, you're gonna end up with something that's a little bit crumblier, more like cookie dough mm. almost. You get like a flatter. Exactly, and that's not a bad thing, but that's, you know, if we're talking about that really flaky, delicious pie crust, which is what we're gonna make today, yeah. uh, we want to do a couple of things, and one is keep everything really cold. You can help it a few different ways, make sure everything's cold in the fridge before you even start using it. You can even chill your flour mm. and the bowl that you're making it in before you start. So if you're somebody who has hot hands and you wanna skip the food processor you can do all of those things but you can also at any point if you feel like it's melting just pop it in the fridge it's okay. not you know it's not uh, that's good advice because yeah. like Start if I threw this in the fridge for 20 minutes and absolutely. kept going it's all good absolutely all right. so the first thing we're gonna do we're just gonna toss all the cubes so that they're fully coated in flour before uh -huh. we start and that's just sort of gonna help us with the process. For one thing, now there's a little layer of starch that's gonna prevent it from melting. Is this like a standard size butter cube or do you use larger cubes than the <laughs> average? I, I always start with about a half an inch cube. Uh -huh. And you don't need to go smaller than that. People are often actually surprised when we're done mixing this dough, people sometimes are really shocked at how little I've mixed the butter in. Mm. So you definitely don't want to make them too much smaller than this. They could be a little bigger than this. It's just going to mean more time mixing. Um, so then what we're going to do is we're just going to take the cubes of butter and we're going to squish them between our fingers. Yeah. And every time you squish a piece, you kind of want to toss it, make sure it's still coated with flour. Okay. Um, it's just going to help it, again, from not melting and it's also kind of getting them combined, which is what we're going. And basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep doing this and, there, and until we get to the right amount. And how do you know what the right amount is? How do you know? Uh, for a flaky pie crust, which is what I usually use for like fruit pies, mm -hmm. we would want to leave the butter about the size of walnut halves. So this got mixed a little bit more than yours. No, no, that's good. That, that's about right for a mealy crust. Okay. So I think you're perfect and that'll be a great pie crust for either a pumpkin pie or a pecan, any kind of custardy pie. Hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna make a well in the center, just yeah. like make a hole, and we're gonna start adding ice water. Now, you can be really precise with this and use a tablespoon measure to kind of help you track how much you're adding, right. but really, 
the, the, this part is all about hydrating and every brand of flour is gonna hydrate differently. So if you learn to do it by eye, then you don't have to be so in your head quite about it. I like things like this where you sort of have a sense memory. In your totally, hands exactly, and you can be. kind of just get the hang of it. So I'm gonna start by adding just a few tablespoons, like about two or three tablespoons into the well. And then what I do at first is I kind of start by using this tossing motion. So kind of like tossing the flour like this rather than mixing it. This just helps us um, build up less gluten while still combining the ingredients. Interesting. And I know gluten can be a dirty word, but it, it, it sort of is uh, in pie crust because the more gluten you form, the tougher the dough is going to be. And that's going to be that thing you can't get your fork through it. Huh. You know what I'm talking about? So like, let's say, like if you have your kid helping you or something, mm -hmm. and they're like kneading the dough, kneading the dough, you're going to get a really tough crust. Let's put it this way. When I make pie dough with my nieces, yeah. I'm doing this part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they, they squish the butter, I add the water. All right. So I'm gonna add another tablespoon-ish to my dough, and I'm just gonna keep doing this until it starts to come together. And as it gets closer, I like to actually kind of fold it over onto itself. It's kind of a kneading motion, mm -hmm. but not as intense as bread kneading. You're just kind of being gentle with it. Right. Now, this is what always happens to me, is like this much of my dough has come together and then this much is kind of powdery. Okay. So what I do is I literally just take that part that's all come together oh. and I set it aside and I just add a little bit of water to this part. And sometimes at this stage when you only need a little more water, it can be quite difficult to just add a little. Right. So what I do is I dip my hands into the water and just like flick the water on it. And that way I'm not adding too much at one time. And when it's too dry, it looks sort of powdery and it doesn't hold together as well. But it can really be the matter of like a couple of drops of water to be just right. So you see it's holding together, but you can even see there's like visible cracks where it's still looking kind of clumpy. Yes, you got it too, you're perfect. So if it's a little too dry, you can tell because these cracks are more visible and there's actually like powdery pieces right. that haven't been properly hydrated. And when it's too wet, it'll be really like sticky to the touch. That can also happen if your butter melts a lot while you're working. So if you're ever not sure, just toss it in the fridge for a little while before you continue. And if you have, uh, if it's too wet, basically what you can do is refrigerate it, let it chill out for a little bit, and then roll it out using a lot more flour than you normally would. And I it's see. gonna absorb that flour. Normally that isn't what you wanna do if your dough is just right. Yeah. But if your dough's a little bit too wet, you can just give it a little extra flour at that rolling stage to kind of help bring it back to where it needs to be. Feel so much more confident. Yay! Right. Well, and now we're gonna get to the fun part, which is actually rolling it out. So you'll just form it into a disc and we'll chill this. Sure. And then we can wash our hands and bring out the dough that we already made. Cheers. Cheers! <laughs> Okay, so we chilled our dough for about 30 minutes minimum. Okay. I like to chill it a little longer, but 30 minutes is usually enough to let the gluten relax and get your butter firm enough to roll. So um, we're gonna flour our surface, and what I like to do is actually be pretty generous with the flour at the beginning, and then ideally not have to add much more as I continue to roll. It is important to remember that all the flour you're incorporating, it is getting worked into the dough. Can a dough get too dry at this point though? Yes, it definitely can. So just be, you know, air on the side, like I said, I kind of know about, you know, a small handful for me mm -hmm. is enough for me to roll out the whole dough, do this entire process. So I kind of like to start by pushing from the center up and down, and then I rotate it. And part of the reason I rotate it while I work is just to make sure it's not getting stuck to the surface. Mm -hmm. You can also then, if it is like that just there, I felt a little bit of sticking, so I can just kind of make sure that that bit gets a little more flour. Do you ever flip the whole thing? Yeah, definitely. Is that helpful? Or? Yeah, you can flip it, and one thing to remember is that then like, this side is the side that was down, so it has more flour on it right. than the other side. So you can even, at this stage, if I'm not sure if that's too much, I can brush it off. You can see in my dough here, you can see pieces of butter. This oh, yeah. is more like a flaky dough. And then the one that you have is the mealy dough and you just see less visible butter. It's in there. Yeah. It's just not I'm in as big a piece. I'm call this the sturdy dough. The sturdy. Me I know. Just I, feels know. Like, you know. <laughs> I know it's not. I've used that word for years and I know it's not the best. If someone is very enthusiastic, is it possible to roll the, the 
pie dough too thin? Yes, it definitely is. And, and this, where I'm at right now, is about what you're looking for. It's anywhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch thick. I kind of like to err on the side of being a smidge thicker than an eighth, just because it makes it easier to handle. Okay. But about an eighth of an inch is what most recipes are gonna say, and that's, oh. that's pretty accurate. If you roll your dough too thin, what I would recommend doing is actually just folding it into quarters and putting it back in the fridge, letting it rest for a little bit longer, and then you can reuse it. And the folding action kind of will just give it some more layers. It's right. sort of like making rough puff pastry. Um, so that's something that you can you can do to save it if you roll it too thin. And it should be, you know, it's thick enough that I could even pick it up like this. But if it's thin enough that when I picked it up, it's gonna rip and tear, yeah. that's usually too thin. Uh, an indicator. So when I get it um, to about the right width, usually what I do is I like to turn the pie plate upside down. And if it's at least one inch wider all the way around, like, so I would roll yours a little oh, bit more, right. just to make sure you got enough on that side. And you'll see why, because I have something I like to do with that excess. Okay. So now what I do is I roll it up onto the rolling pin. And you can at this point, actually if you see that there's too much flour, you can kind of brush it away as you roll it up. This is one of my favorite tricks. To move the pie dough? Yeah. Me too, it just feels, and it, it feels also good. like, you know, <laughs> just feels like a trick, for real. <laughs> and then we just kind of unfurl it over. Ooh la la, so satisfying. And then I just kind of pick it up at the edges to nudge it into the, into the pie plate. And... Uh, Did I screw up here? Like if this is not... We can just move it over. So yeah, just pick it up. Perfect, like right. just like that. And then, yeah, we can just kind of press it in. That's a great example of like, those are the kinds of things that are always gonna happen if it's not perfectly round. And it doesn't need to be perfectly round. So much of this we're gonna trim away right now. Right. So don't freak out if yours ends up being more of a square. Um, okay, so now we're gonna use one of my favorite tools, which are the scissors. You could use a knife, and since you're you know, a chef, you might be more comfortable with a knife. But I think this is easier for a lot of people at home because you can trim off the excess and kind of keep an eye on where you're cutting. Okay. So um, I just basically trim it so that there's only about a half inch excess all the way around. So once you get about a half an inch excess all the way around, and again, you can see mine's not perfect, and so we're just kind of folding it under to meet flush with the edge, but we've got that excess built in there now. And I like to give it a good press because um, make sure that the dough kind of is adhered because if you just fold it under and you have a lot of flour, it might not stick to the dough and you know it could puff out on you in the oven because our dough is so flaky. So mine looks a little different than yours. Yours there. looks great. This is <laughs> this is years and years of pie making, you know, and, and I'm gonna show you kind of how to even that crust now. Right. Because just by nature, different um, parts of it are gonna be a little bit thicker, a little bit whatever, and that's kind of what you have here. So what I would do now mm -hmm. is just sort of go along and with my fingers and kind of even it out like okay. this. And that's gonna help any points where it's too thick, any point where there's like a divot like this, you can even kind of push it up. Yeah. Okay, so it's time to chill it again because you've usually handled it a decent amount by then. Um, so the first crimp is a classic finger crimp, and for that, are you left-handed or right-handed? I'm a righty. Okay, so it'll be the same. But you'll use you use your dominant hand to make like a V shape with your thumb and forefinger. Okay. You did it. <laughs> Just like that, the pie is done. <laughs> and then you'll use your non the pointer finger of your non-dominant hand to kind of press towards it and down. So you're trying you're moving your fingers towards each other, but you're also kind of pressing down, and that's what's adhering it to the pie plate. You're doing great. I screwed up that, that one. That's okay, I'll sh you can go back and fix them. I actually always like to go back at the end and sometimes I'm feeling like a pointier crimp, sometimes they end up a little more rounded and so sometimes half it ends up half and half and I go back and fix them a little yeah. bit. Pretty okay. Yeah, you're doing great. All right. You know, the only other thing is you do, even though you're wanting to press down and pressing in, you don't want to press so hard that you tear the crust. That's really the only thing that would be too aggressive at this stage. So I'm gonna show you an even easier crimp now where all you need is a fork. You can just dip your fork a little bit in flour and just kind of press straight down all the way around the okay. pie. But I like to do this, I think it's a little bit fancier and it's just as easy. So I kind of press Ooh. the fork at an angle like yeah. this and press down and then make the fork go the other angle, the other direction. And the only thing you have to be careful about, just like with you know using your fingers, is you don't want to rip or tear the dough. The main reason you want to avoid that is that you don't want to risk any filling leaking through the actual dough. That's going to make your 
pie get all burnt, it's gonna make it stick in the pan, make it hard to get a slice out. So you wanna use a firm but gentle hand. You just notice this pattern, it's very distinct yeah, yeah. when it's finished. I actually, I enjoy doing this sometimes, but it is, you can kind of mix the crimp styles. You could, you know, do two forks like this, and then a couple of finger crimps, and then you could, mm. you know, even do a finger crimp and press the fork in between the crimp. Yeah. Okay, so for a double crust pie, the whole style of how you get to the crimp is just a little bit different, so I wanted to show you that too. Okay. Um, since you've got two crusts, we've got our filling under there, some apples. So and the I, first crust is, is what we did, yep. but it's still hanging off. It's hanging you off. You didn't fold it underneath. Nope, not yet. It's the same amount of excess, still a half an inch excess all the way around. Mm -hmm. We've got our filling in, and then we unfurled the top crust off the pin the same way that you would. The idea here is to press the top crust and the bottom crust together a little bit. So pretty firmly all the way around, I'm just gonna pinch the top crust and the bottom crust together. It's like a giant ravioli. It is. Now you're speaking my language. <laughs> <laughs> and you get pretty firm with it, just like you would with pasta to make sure that they're really like combined together. Yeah. And then I'll trim away the excess okay. to about a half an inch again. Okay, so now I'm just gonna do the same thing that we did before and just fold this under all the way around the pie. Cool. And um, that way the top crust is like even tucked underneath the bottom crust. Yeah. So they're really, there's no risk of them kind of coming apart in the oven. So just tuck it under all the way around and then we're gonna crimp. And for this one, we're gonna do one of my favorite styles, which is called the rope crimp. This is easy, it's just the same exact technique, but with two pie doughs exactly. together. Okay, so now we're gonna do the rope crimp, which is a pretty easy one. You just do it with your two pointer fingers okay. like this. And you just kind of take the dough at an angle. You would just kind of put your finger at the base of where the last one ends and squeeze huh. in between your fingers like this, that. This, to me, feels tr like trickier than the other stuff. And it, it's funny because just I feel I like I didn't feel nervous until this Try time. it out. I think it might be easier than you think. So you were doing like this kind of move. Yep. Can you just do it again? Yep. All right, and all right. See? Oh, what if I smush it too much there? No, that's good. Yeah. We can always go back and even it out after we've done the whole thing cuz sometimes Again, once you get going, you, you get the groove of it and the yeah. angle. Kind of. All right, I'm, I'm feeling it's it now. easy, right? And it's yeah. also like you like you're doing Nothing right to now. Be, I was nervous for no reason. It's fine. All right, this is nice. It is nice, right? So we've done three different crimp styles, and they're all beautiful. Mm -hmm. And now they're basically ready for baking. The double crust pie. Uh, we would just need to do a little bit of finishing to it. I would egg wash it, maybe put a little turbinado sugar or demerara or something on top. With a double crust. Do you always need to cut slats into it, or can you sometimes bake it with no air holes at all? It's pretty much better to cut the slats, or the, the vents of yeah. any sort, because they're gonna let all the steam out, and especially the steam from the fruit. Yeah. As the fruit cooks down, it's gonna let out a lot of steam, and uh, it just makes for a less, it makes your top crust a little crisper if you let that steam vent I out. See. The one tip for cutting the vents in is to do that after you've applied any finishes like egg wash or sugar. Uh, okay. Because those finishes can actually close the vents back up. These single crust pies would either be ready uh, to be filled and baked just as is, mm -hmm. or you could par bake or blind bake them. If someone is totally inexperienced, what is par baking? What does that mean? So par baking stands for partial baking, mm -hmm. and that's something that you might want to do for a pie crust or for a pie filling that has is wetter. So like a custard filling like pumpkin. If you've ever had a soggy bottom on your pumpkin pie, it's just because the amount of time it takes for that pumpkin custard to bake isn't as long as it takes for the full pie crust to bake. So before you add your wet filling, you wanna do something with just the raw crust. Yes, you would dock it all over with a fork like this, just to make this, it's gonna be so flaky, you wanna like pierce it to make sure that it doesn't get too many air pockets. I even dock the sides like this. Wow. Um, remember that these holes will fill up when it bakes, so it's, we don't have to worry about filling leaking through them later. Then put a piece of parchment paper and fill it with pie weights. I like to tell people to fill it all the way up to this edge because that's the only way it's really weighted down. If you only fill it up to here, then this whole part isn't weighted. And you're gonna have, that's when you can have issues of the crust kind of sloping in on you, huh. or even this part will puff up 
and then the rest of it will be flat and it'll seem very odd. So you fill it with pie weights? Yes. Uh -huh. So I usually, it takes uh, three pounds of dried beans to do it, pretty much two and a half, three pounds, uh -huh. to fill it up all the way. But it really makes a difference and it's worth it if you're gonna do the par baking. Hmm. Um, and so for par baking, you bake it uh, for about 12 to 15 minutes just until it barely starts to brown, then you would take the pie weights out, bake it for a couple minutes more. And par baking, as I'm gonna show you with the finished pies, mm -hmm. I par baked both of the single crust pies and it makes a huge difference in how brown the bottom crust is. It's kind of amazing. Ah. I really recommend it. Time to taste some pie, right? Yes, please. Let's right. eat pie. Now, before we get started, there's two people from the office who are going to come and taste some pie with us. Hey, guys. Hi. 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 Welcome. We bought our own four. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so tell the world who you are. Hi, I'm Eunice. I'm the director of brand activations here. And I'm Eric. I'm the senior editor here. Thanks for coming to eat pie with us. Oh, thanks for having us. I love your pie so much. I'm so excited. Well, before we eat, I want to show you guys my favorite pie party trick, which is a really excellent one to pull out for your family and friends at Thanksgiving, if you choose to par bake. People don't always know this, but that if you bake your pie properly, it should pop right out of the pie plate. It won't stick Whoa. in the pie plate at all. Oh, yeah. So we're gonna try it with this one and see. Usually it's a good indicator. You can kind of like twist it a few times. See, this one's gonna come right out. So I'll just kind of grab it underneath. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah, that's Ooh perfect. la la. Like, that's oh, nice. That's so <laughs> and then you can just cut it right on the, the thing, right? It's kind yeah. of amazing. Yeah. Okay, so for our taste test, we're kind of focusing on the crust today. I can cut right on here, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How'd you get it so perfect? <laughs> well, this My pumpkin pie is always the crack. This is an uncrackable pumpkin pie because it doesn't have eggs yeah. in it. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that's I love that. Wow. See, I would just eat it like, yeah. like a pizza yeah. right now. You want to hand me one of those plates? Yeah. I don't want to. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, Eric, can you? So, what are your thoughts on ceramic versus glass? Ceramic is my favorite because yeah. it conducts heat the best. Mm -hmm. Glass is my second favorite just because you can actually look see, at it and yeah, see if it's brown enough. Yeah. And then my and then metal, they really all work well. Yeah. It's just a matter of understanding what you might need to do to tweak it. And so you might want to, with metal pans, since they don't conduct heat quite as well, they might have, you might want to par bake. Right. That's what it comes to. I'm laughing because I heard like part of that because I was already <laughs> seeing some pie. So. It's so insane. Like this yeah. is such a thin can bottom, I have a fork but too? It gets so flaky, um, like the sound that my fork made as I. Like, I know, oh, I love that sound, so right? Crazy. Oh. I'm never. I'm just so amazed by, like, the, how flaky the bottom is. It's and not. again, this is still the mealier crust, but it yeah. still is flaky. That's why I like hesitate to use those words right. sometimes. But my other favorite part is that your fork can go right through it because yeah. you don't want a tough yeah. pie crust at Thanksgiving. Tell us about the apple pie. So this pie, my, one of my favorite things is that we do this technique where you fold under at the mm -hmm. edge and it actually makes it even flakier. Yeah. Mm. So you can see it right here and you can see it on your slices too. You well, you've see... combined like two crusts basically. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. And so not only is the dough already flaky, yeah. but then when you fold it under, you're almost making more layers and you can see that in the so so this is slow well, this is like the single crust right. and then this is like a bottom and a top combined awesome. to create that extra that. and you do have to be careful the thicker your crust is at the edge it's easier to crimp but right. it also takes longer to bake yeah. so I always give people the advice that you really shouldn't be afraid of taking your pie like too far except for maybe things like it cracking yeah. so taste that flakiness it, yeah. it looks like a clean them on like yeah I saw <laughs> that you like, did you do an egg wash and a brown sugar? Yes, egg wash, and I like uh, turbinado or demerara sugar on the, on the top of it. Um, sorry, what, what kind of pie is this? This is the cider caramel apple pie. Nice, okay. And what do you think Wait. about the difference? No, no, I'm not gonna get rid of them. Don't. <laughs> I was cleaning up the pie crumbs and she got, hold on, open your mouth, I'll sprinkle them in. Oh my God. <laughs> I was thinking like pie, like confetti. <laughs> they are precious, it I won't is. get rid of them. It? I'll just eat from here. But what do you guys think? The pie crusts are actually really similar. The yeah. only real yeah. difference is, is and because that's the thing I think people, they don't want their custard pie dough to be any less flaky, but just by that little addition, oh yeah, look at that. That modest little piece right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Just by that little addition of mixing the butter in a little bit more, it just makes it a little bit sturdier and easier to work with. Mm -hmm. And you'll even kind of see it. It's harder to look at the bottom crust on a juicy pie like right. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, you can see that it's, the nice thing is is that, it's browned, but we still have a nice thin layer yeah. because if it's too thick, it'll be hard to get your fork. On the flaky crust, do you think you can taste the butter more? Or is that I in my of, mind? I kind of do. I've yeah. always sort of felt that because there are 
bigger patches of it when it goes in. That was my first impression between the two crusts, that this is like a little more toasty maybe, and this buttery. is buttery. Yeah, yeah. and the, the ratio is exactly the same though, so it is just a matter of manipulation. And I like that. I like having one solid base recipe yeah. Yeah. that you know how to handle and you can make a couple different things yeah. with it. Thank you guys so much for coming and tasting the pie. Oh my gosh. Do you oh, like the difference? Kidding. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Definitely gonna make this one and this one and then <laughs> and then you're gonna take that with you? Well, I, sure. I can I can accept yeah. that. And oh then, and that one. Bye. <laughs> Have fun. Thank you and you can take it. Take Have it a good day. <laughs> so I, for me I think the thing I'm gonna take away is the same exact ingredients can yield two slightly different pie pie doughs. Totally. Depending on how finely you work with the butter. Absolutely. And getting in there with your hands kind of allows you to feel those differences yeah. and know what you're working with. And then it kind of comes down to muscle memory. The more pies you bake, the better at it you're going to get. And even if you think a crimp is very difficult, Josh is proof that they're all yeah. very doable. If I can do it, then anyone can. <laughs> well, should we have a pie crust? Cheers. We had one with our raw dough. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna eat this whole thing. Me too. Already did. <laughs>